you break into my country, you know what? I'm going to take your DNA and I'm going to put you on a plane and I'm going to send you the hell back to your freaking country. Coming up here next, new developments in the trial of a small town trying to deal with the impact of illegal immigration on its community. We are testing our willingness to actually hold on to something called the English language, something that is the glue that is supposed to hold us together as a nation. We are becoming a bilingual nation, and that is not good. And that is the fearful part of this. It has m the ramifications are much, much more significant. Um, actually, we could have done it very easily in the last week since they organized themselves into groups. Um, you could have just sent paddy wagons to the protest. Wow. So there's a lot of pretty intense language being thrown around at the moment. I think it's safe to say that illegal immigration is one of the most inflammatory topics of debate here in the United States. Okay, person, how about if we start with you telling us what the illegal immigration debate is all about? The illegal immigration debate is actually not a debate. It's a straight up power play. The so-called debate uh, would be more accurately described as a largely one-sided affair, an extended xenophobic rant. That's what it is. And the people responsible for this are members of the ruling class of American society, or those who, for whatever reason, align themselves with ruling class interests. These people want to monopolize the definition of American identity. They want to be the ones who decide who is a real American and who is not. I'm an authentic American. You're not. So get out. Stop ruining my country and so on. So who are the different groups involved? Mm. There are two major players in the current situation. In the first group, of course, uh, there are those people who are currently being labeled illegal immigrants. Most of them are recent immigrants, most notably from Mexico. The second group are also immigrants, but they are immigrants who have been here longer, maybe a hundred years, or, or maybe even going all the way back to the Mayflower or something like that. And actually there's a third group, uh, a forgotten group that's been made practically invisible over the past 200 or so years. And that's the original native inhabitants of these lands. But of course, they're never mentioned because supposedly they are irrelevant to the discussion. So you're framing this um, current conflict as being primarily between two immigrant groups, the illegal immigrants and, and the, um, the more established immigrants? Yes. Uh, let's approach this historically. The first colonial settlements were established in the New World in the 16th and 17th centuries. The people who settled these colonies were from Europe, plus their slaves. Uh, the definition of immigrant is a person who leaves one country to settle permanently in another. So these people you were showing on TV a few minutes ago, unless they are Native American, they are immigrants. They may have been here for a while, um, long enough to put themselves into positions of privilege, but they are the descendants of immigrants. The irony of immigrants calling for the deportation of other immigrants uh, seems to be lost on everyone. What about the illegal part? I mean, as far as I understand it, no one's been calling for the deportation of all immigrants. The controversy seems to be over illegal immigrants, right? Again, uh, let's turn to history. I'll give you a mini history of the United States in, in two minutes, okay? The United States started out as a colony. Everybody knows this. The people who came here to settle, they were from Europe. This is settler colonialism. For native people, the, the results were catastrophic. What happened to their land? Well, the settlers bought some of it or simply killed them so that they could take it or forcibly drove them off their land. I don't need to tell you this. I know you've studied this yourself. The information is there for anybody who wants to know and who has the stomach to read it. The bottom line is that there was a tremendous amount of lands illegally seized from native people, and the occupation of these lands, taken by settlers, 
or immigrants, if you prefer, continues to this day. Much of what is commonly referred to as the United States is in fact an illegal occupation of native lands. In other words, America is filled with illegal immigrants. And we're not even talking about Mexicans. This is not a perspective you hear on television. Of course not. There's no reason why the mainstream media would want to discuss this issue from this perspective. America is not interested in committing national suicide. Now these settlers, in the process of destroying or displacing the hundreds of native nations that filled North America, they created a new country, the United States of America, right? Well, 200 plus years later, the United States is the most powerful country in the world. And the settlers who built this country are now established. They've created positions of privilege for themselves. And they exercise some of this privilege by labeling some of the more recent immigrants illegal. You know, we act like the laws that sort immigrants into legal or illegal types dropped out of the sky directly from God. Of course not. Laws are made and enforced by the dominant group in a society, uh, generally to benefit themselves, just like how you can put millions of black people in jail by creating a war on drugs, or, uh, or terrorize entire nations by inventing a so-called war on terror. You can attack people by making them illegal. You demonize them. You attribute every social ill you can think of to their presence. And what I'm saying is that this is hypocritical, because in the case of the United States, the dominant settler group who's acting all bent out of shape over what to do with all these illegal immigrants, they have yet to acknowledge their own status as settlers, their own status as illegal immigrants. You're using the terms immigrant and settler interchangeably. Look, immigrant is a code word. As far as I'm concerned, it's a euphemism for the word settler. People don't like to say settler because then it makes them think of settler colonialism. And of course, once you start talking about how settler colonialism works, you very quickly start questioning the legitimacy of a nation founded on the exploitation of native land. You start looking at the historical and moral ramifications of a nation whose very existence would be impossible had it not been for 500 years of genocide against native people. That's why people like the word immigrant instead of settler. Apparently thinking about genocide and stealing makes people feel bad. Okay, got it. Yesterday, when we talked on the phone, you said you had a solution to the illegal immigration problem. Um, you said you could solve it in five minutes. Yeah, I did. Um, here's how it can happen. Let's say all the so-called illegal immigrants, I've heard figures like 15 or 20 million people, Let's say they all get together and decide to make a new nation. Doesn't matter what they call it, they can call it whatever they like. Give it a great name like uh, the People's Democratic America or Freedom Land. The main idea is all these illegal people, they get together and they draft a constitution. Uh, they vote on it, approve it, and then they give themselves citizenship in this brand new country they just made. They don't even have to go anywhere. They just plop their new nation down right on top of the already existing one. If anybody in the old nation complains, just point to the new constitution and legal system you just made as proof of your uh, legitimacy. It works. We know it works because that's how America came into existence. There it is. Problem solved. How is that? a solution what about um how's that fair for native people now they have two nations on top of them hmm. I, I didn't say it was a fair solution i just said that i solved the illegal immigration problem <laughs>